PFW's cars here. They notice I'm be being a little cooler than I am in my normal videos today. And that's because this car makes me feel cooler and it's such a cool car. Isn't it funny how a car can change your, you know, how you feel inside? We'll talk about that a little bit more in the drive part of the review. But let's take a look at the car outside, uh, do a walk around, check out that engine and interior, and then take it for a drive. I love what they've done with the front of this car. It just looks aggressive, it looks intense, it looks mean without being like some of the Lexuses initially did, where it looks overly angry. I like it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Headlights as well are integrated in there, which means they straight on, they're great, but in a turn, they just stay straight on, which most cars now do have a turn function on their headlights. Little complaint, but it would be nice to have love these rims on the side not to mention these are continental pro contact tires so super grippy super now this is of course the coupe so it's got that swooping roof line back there it almost looks like a hatchback I, I can't wait to get my hands on the hatchback version of this car if they make a coupe hatchback because I feel like it's gonna look exactly the same or more close but just have more function all right let's peek at the back of this car now the back is very, I, I would say, probably more controversial than the first. Same as the sedan. It just sort of has a very unique look about it. I like it. The first time I saw it, I was kind of like, eh, but it really does grow on you. Uh, and, you know, now, even this color, Weekend, I kind of like it. I'm going to miss this. And my friends call this car the Green Monster. And I'm going to miss the Green Monster. First, let's check out the engine. So it is a small engine, but it does make a ton of power uh, and really, you know, make this car feel properly quick, even with that CVT, which we'll talk about in the drive review. Now, Honda's calling their newer engines Earth Dreams, much like Mazda has Sky Active and Nissan has their, you know, marketing version here. Let's grab some exhaust. Oh, we're back here. One thing I found kind of funny is this car does have dual exhaust or, you know, simulated dual exhaust under there, yet they totally hide it. Uh, that seems like a bit of effort to go to, uh, just to hide those dual exhausts. <laughs> This car uh, you know they say they've mostly just chopped part off the back for the coupe Honda does but as you can see rear legroom back here again my seats adjusted for me who's just under six feet uh, and it's not huge it can fit a grocery bag now I actually can fit better back here than it looked like and I actually like a six foot person could fit back here or a six foot driver with you know a slightly shorter passenger a bit of headroom because my head actually goes into the glass here, which raises a little bit higher. Every day, I would not want to be a passenger back here, but there is good shoulder room. It is comfortable. There's even like a little console I can kind of lean in. So it's not bad. A six foot person, if they didn't have like a long, long torso, could do it, which is actually pretty impressive. You know, for a coupe, there's not a whole lot of small coupes you know, that actually do have good space. And this is one of them. It has massive doors uh, as well. That is one of my little critiques of this car. I've had, you know, several coupes before, and these doors, I'm not sure if it's the way they're, the springs are, because the passenger feels the same way, are just extremely heavy feeling. Uh, you really have to, you know, grab it and give it a good tug uh, shut. Getting in here is probably the hardest part, as you can see. It actually took one of my flip-flops off as I was trying to, uh, you know, shoehorn myself in here, because when you slide the seat forward, uh, the seat itself, the hinge wasn't designed to move forwards. Having said all that, this is definitely like bring your friends on the weekend uh, kind of car. Uh, if you regularly have, you know, adults riding in the back seat, uh, they won't like you very much on your... Honda's uh, always had very nice interiors, and this one's one of the best in the business. Um, Honda didn't just benchmark this car against other Japanese cars. They actually benchmarked it against the Europeans, and it shows there. Look at this, all this metal trim you get. You know, the stitching there is extremely nice. The wheel, again, even though this is the Touring model, it's not a flat bottom. I'm sure they're saving that for their true sport model, uh, but it's a nice interior. These gauges are great because it's a full color gauge. It can display 
pretty much anything it can display album art uh, can't quite display the map the full map but you can tell that's where Honda is going with that a nice little shifter there for the CVT which is a torque converter CVT we'll talk more about that on in the drive review uh, it can fit Dr. Pepper up there <laughs> as well this piece runs all along here totally seamless totally nicely integrated this is a 10 speaker stereo it looks really cool all the you know speakers are uh, you know colored and stuff like that uh, so I like the stereo as well uh, it does have something called neural sound which is kind of a surround sound it's like logic 7 or any of the others so that's pretty cool and it has high definition Sirius XM uh, which very few cars have, and it makes a huge difference. As we're entering the year 2017, the drive tech on this car is phenomenal. Collision mitigation, uh, lane departure, so it'll pull you back into your lane. It's, they actually call it road departure here, as well as, as you can see, lane keeping assistance. One minor annoyance that's similar to the Mercedes and the Hyundai, you know, I drove with this package is better. You have to turn that lane keeping on every single time you enter the car. So that's kind of a bummer. This little tree here indicates eco mode. Which Sport I, mode here, which helps the CVT, you know, feel fully automatic, honestly. But the thing about this tree, even in sport mode, if the tree is on, and I'll show it to you in the drive review, and I hope you can hear it, the engine just gives this little, mm, this almost, it's very similar to the Nissan Altima, uh, you know, in the CVT's Nissan uses there's that almost like a rattle or grunt. This and all, it's a minor gripe. On the infotainment system here, there is no knob. It's all either, it's all touch feedback, which looks cool. Give us a knob. I mean, it would have been that big uh, and it would have been helpful. They got it with the climate control. At least some cars are doing away with knobs on the climate control. So good job to Honda on that there. As for storage space, that's actually an impressive area here. I don't usually talk about that, but there's this little cubby up here where you can store a lot of stuff, which is cool on a coupe. And this is a brilliant design. When it's back, you can lift it up and then you just have like a change holder back there. You have this sliding holder here and it's all about levels because this cup holder can actually fit under the sliding holder. And when you do that, if you have like a two liter soda bottle or some just huge. I want to point out these seats. I love this insert in here. So, so sporty looking on the touring model with these seats. Uh, it just, it definitely opens up the car. Okay guys, let's take the green monster for a drive. Uh, I actually saw a man yesterday in a green visibility jacket and the color was almost identical to this car. But you know, I, I've gotten a lot of compliments, a lot of you know people like it, especially younger people. So if a car had clean enough lines, I think I would pop consider this color. This car has such sharp lines though, I'd love to see it in you know a, a black or a dark blue, or maybe a darker color to smooth everything out. But uh, as promised, let's go for a drive. I made, I'll leave it in eco for this part of the review and then I'll switch it into sport later. Because there is plenty of power in eco mode, because of the torque converter on the CVT, it's better than the Nissan ones. And the Nissan ones were already getting really, really good, surprisingly good. All right, so this car is great to drive, and I mean great as in Mazda 3 great. Uh, you know, up there with the Germans, BMW, great. It's so, so fun. I said earlier, a car can change how you feel, this one really can feel good while you're driving and you're having fun. I mean, maybe not if you're sitting, you know, in, on a commute in traffic, but as soon as you get off the highway, this car turns into a fun, fun car. In the turns, the steering, extremely precise. Great job, Honda, on that. Not giving into the electric steering thing. A few companies like Porsche and, and et cetera have done it and made the electric steerings feel mechanical, for lack of a better word. Uh, but but not many companies can pull that off. So Honda stuck with a rack and pinion steering on here. And, oh gosh, here's a corner. The suspension is great. It's, it, it grips, but it's also good for long road trips. I take every car I drive on uh, local city roads, on country roads with turns, and also on the highway to make sure there's plenty of power. I try to you know, see if it's livable on the highway for a little bit of time. This car meets all those criteria with the suspension two gripes about it that thrashy sound the transmission in uh, eco mode that's a minor gripe you turn the eco mode off you lose a little fuel economy if that 
you know, annoys you. You get used to it. It's kind of like a start-stop uh, function there. The other gripe and brakes, they're a, when you really dig into them, they could just be a little bit bigger, and I'm sure Honda's saving that for their sport model for the SI. That's another thing on the brake assist. It doesn't beep at you initially. It just flashes brake on the drive line there, but it doesn't actually beep. And then as far as I know, it doesn't actually brake. I haven't been brave enough, uh, you know, to actually try that out, but it seems it'll only beep at you and not uh, fully brake. It'll probably prep the brakes, but it won't actually engage them unless you're on the smart cruise control. So little thing there. The last thing is the tires are awesome on this car. The Continentals, they use as stock. That said, here, let me take a turn a little bit quickly. Ah, I was hoping uh, to break the car free a little bit because it will, it, it actually would be fun drifting because it does, they're thin enough where it does break free surprisingly easily. Could, I guess, be a, a pro, but really, if you're just trying to carve some canyons, if you're just trying to have a great handling car, there we go. I got a little tire squeal there. I broke it free a little bit. It just did there. So it just said the beep, the brake thing where it felt more eminent. So it actually beeped at me. If you could hear that, there wasn't actually a thing. It's just as I was turning, it thought I would, the trajectory would hit a car, which is good. I'd rather it warn me uh, falsely than not warn me when there's something actually there. So Mazda 3 like good, but a little bit maybe uh, more livable. I, I'm waiting to review the 2017 Mazda 3 to see if they've made it that much more fit and finished inside. Quieter. The Mazda 3 is a little bit louder than this car. If you close the sunroof, it's pretty quiet. I've done a lot to make the coupe sportier. If you can, I'd recommend getting the coupe or waiting for a true sport model on the sedan if it's within your budget. Because uh, I've spent a brief amount of time with the sedan. This coupe is much, much better. Um, the sedan's not bad, uh, but I wouldn't say the sedan necessarily beats or keeps up with the Mazda 3, whereas the coupe in the touring model here, oh boy, I have kids yet um, or anything like that. So it's like, I don't worry about putting a car seat back there. So the trunk on this car is a little small, but it does fold down there. So you actually have that pass through. So I would say that's not a deal breaker, at least for a coupe. In the ranking, because that's what everyone asked me in the comment year yet, as livable as pretty much every other Japanese car out there. I like it more than the Camry. The Elantra, I like it for different reasons, so I can't say more. The Elantra is like a little luxury car, whereas um, this is like a little sports car, so different demographics there. Nissan Sentra, you know, that's not a fair comparison, much like the Mazda's getting a little bit older uh, without, in, without having a full, full redesign, so is the Sentra, um, so. Uh, it definitely beats the center as it stands now. Three, I think you'd have to drive both back to back and just it would come down to money because they're both great. Um, and that's a real testament both to Mazda that they can build a car that can keep up with someone like Honda who builds um, So let me know any questions you guys have down in the comments. I have to say goodbye to the green machine now or, or the green monster as some people are calling her, which, you know, I am actually sad to do. Thanks, guys. Till next time, drive on.